right, everybody. So welcome back. And this that's literal. Welcome back because we were here a week ago recording this. This is like Groundhog Day. My silly self forgot to press record. Uh, <laughs> and I got to test one of the virtues with this couple and it was grace and they 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 passed with flying colors they did not judge me or scold me or anything they just said oh okay so i'm going to make the most out of this time and we're gonna re-record i'm gonna ask the same questions but different spirit and i'm gonna switch things up a little bit so let's get into it it's really magical that that the only really bad part was i think there's a lot of magic in the first one but i think we can have new magic because magic is infinite, according to Harry Potter, right? <laughs> so, tell me uh, your names and where you were born. How about that? Okay, my name is Yasuhiro David Hirano, go by David. I was born in Japan, grew up in Brazil, uh, and slash Las Vegas, and now I'm in Buenos Aires. You sound um. a little bit like a trained assassin, the life of a trained assassin. These are all assassin places where assassins go. Just saying, just saying I'm onto you. <laughs> Let's say, uh, does it? Name and where you're born? Name, or, okay. Or where you're from? Um, hello, my name is Araceli and I am from Argentina, born and raised. So half Brazilian, half Argentinian. <laughs> Mm. Wait, so is that a coincidence that you both have Brazil connected somehow? Coincidence. Right? Coincidence. Yeah. Coincidence. Yeah. Okay. Or, or casual. <laughs> a casual, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Something in that crazy Jardim air. So how did you guys meet? Um, because uh, when you met, you were living in different countries, right? Yeah. So give me the scoop. So, so we met through our matching advisors. Um, my matching advisor is the wife to <laughs> David's matching advisor. So it was connected from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And they recommended to meet yeah, for us to meet. Mm -hmm. So David's yeah. matching advisor was a guy. And he was married to your matching advisor, who's a woman. <laughs> this yeah. day and age, you have to clarify this stuff. And then uh, <laughs> they just were kind of hanging out one day, drinking coffee, and they were like, oh my God. You, 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 ha, ha, and they kind of pieced it all together. How did that work? Like, Because they might not have known about it, you guys kind of respectively, but somehow this inspiration happened. Did they ever tell you the story of like how they they saw that possibility pop into their perspective. Yeah, I guess it was from both sides, but uh, I guess from my perspective, I was, uh, I already had this relationship with my matching advisor before, I, when I met him in a workshop. Um, he wasn't my matching advisor yet, but developed the relationship and then once he found out that I was uh, in the ready to begin a process. Then the um, idea came to mind of mm -hmm. of by him knowing my personality and who I was. Then um, and then and then that kind of started my like process. And then and they then knew. <laughs> and then well, t first adding that I knew. Yeah, he's matching advisor from before. Yeah. He's met my family since I was like a little girl, so he knew me uh, mm -hmm. from way before. And and yeah, similar to him, I also knew his wife. And so once I got, once I decided that I was ready to start a matching process, I wanted her to be my matching advisor. And so they knew of us, <laughs> right? Yeah, from before yeah, yeah. we started our matching journey, let's say. And actually what, what I, what they told me, it's like, they thought that we had very complementary personalities mm. that, that we could, mm. uh, like we could be great for each other. And he said 
you know, he's much an advisor, <laughs> uh, said that he had a, uh, an experience by the, where the idea came with for us to get um, to know each other. Yes, that's a spiritual experience. That's, oh, really? That's what the, that's how they described it: a spiritual <laughs> experience when they they the idea popped in their mind, and then that's how it was. It was very interesting to start a conversation. I hope it wasn't a burning bush. I, that, that's been played out. <laughs> Everybody's got their own burning bush these days. So, yeah. <laughs> one thing that's really cool uh, that I really love because we are. I was just in the Philippines giving them a talk, and uh, I really love to talk about the matching the blessing because it's a process in the works we have not perfected this process yet but it's getting a lot better than it was and it has to me like my money's on this process more than any other process of finding an eternal mate than any other way that exists presently and one of the things that i love is the idea that i know you're matching advisors uh Araceli, mm -hmm. and I, both of you i guess because they're a couple and yeah I know that the fact that he knew you since you were a girl, and I know his heart, is that he's thinking of you as a daughter. So he's like a gatekeeper. So he's not going to suggest you casually. He's yeah. going to really check out mm -hmm. this guy and see, are you worthy of this girl? And like, that's such a, that's such a, to have a gatekeeper, somebody who really trusts you and knows you and has the best intentions for you that they're checking out somebody else on your behalf to really get to know their character and their qualities is like something that you can't do on your own because you're too emotionally involved in the process to really get to know the person. But somebody from an outsider's perspective is seeing it with a much more critical lens, especially from a parent's perspective. And I, I really love that because they're kind of seeing it with sober eyes, very lucid, you know, yeah. whereas you know, you're seeing it from like, oh my God, I'm going to have to sleep with this person. And like, God, do they smell, you know, like, you know, there's all this stuff that you're trying to factor in all this data points that mm -hmm. you have to factor yeah. in that it's too, too much. So to have some assistance is just so beautiful. And so did you guys really feel supported in that process of getting to know each other and like trusting the advice of your matching advisors? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> I can say from for myself, I had a lot of trust issues with uh, mm. with suggestions, and then once there was this weight and this very intentionality on recommendations, then I took that seriously, and it was it was mm. it had a lot more weight. It's like not throwing out recommendations to see what sticks, but explaining why this recommendation is a good recommendation and why it's a good idea to to uh, have a conversation with this person. It was just a different Can perspective. Ask, uh, of yeah, well, and that, that perspective is what I wanted to dig into a little bit because uh, you guys both have parents that are in the movement and some mm -hmm. everybody finds their way to the matching and from kind of like slightly different avenues. And um, you also have had a matching advisor, so why did you choose to go that route of having somebody in addition to your parents to be the person that kind of brings you guys together? And how did you, like David, you were saying trust issues. How did you grow to trust some dude, you know, who's not your dad, but he has, he's giving you some suggestions that will have major impacts in your life. Like this is <laughs> the person you got to spend the rest of your life with. Like, how was it that you were able to adopt a uh, trust akin to trusting your parents with some some guy mm. i think it was a combination of of everything in the my personal growth at that moment to where i wanted an outsider's point of view um because i was there's also a lot of self-doubt maybe like being too much in a bubble and um i wanted that outsider's point of view and once we had a much more deeper conversation, going deeper and all like personal insecurities and a lot of the high noon uh, problems that uh, many guys go through. And um, yeah, there was a there was just some more clarity and a more a clear direction on what I can improve myself, what I what I need to do, and and then it's like a clarity roadmap. So then I was able to to. Develop that trust because it was 
it was um yeah it just it was it was what i needed at the time hmm. got it Arzel? In yeah in my case i knew um i knew more actually his matching advisor <laughs> than my matching advisor but but we had this trust relationship with them right kind of like second parents even um or mentors as well right and my parents have a really good relationship with them and they trust them right as elder brothers for them and in the case of me deciding to to um have a matching advisor um it was a bit pragmatical in the sense that my mom didn't have maybe that many um contacts <laughs> it's more uh limited to brazil and some other uh, families that she knew right and she said to me like she said to me she can maybe have more you know yeah, opportunities to meet more people and she's also very prepared for it like yeah she's a therapist and everything so she's gonna be very um helpful in that process but also for me like me my mom wasn't my mom was always a part of the process as well my parents even though i had a matching advisor my parents were there as well and maybe on the day-to-day -day things i was you know, going to my parents but then uh for the process the steps of the matching process in itself i was going for to her but also in terms of uh, certain certain things that maybe my parents weren't able to answer me in certain situations uh she could right and they could even and it was even better because they knew david right so they were able to give me their perspective based on them knowing who this person was and and they were giving me a different point of view on david that i couldn't see for myself because i what i didn't knew him completely right and um connecting it to the previous question the fact that david knew this people right this couple the fact that he had developed this relationship with them for me actually was a good evidence of the fact that you know he was a good person and worth uh, communicating with at least <laughs> did you hear that david you were worth communicating with it's good for you uh so <laughs> then what were your after after you guys met each other what were your thoughts and your initial kind of like um like that that the feelings of I don't know. First, did you was it online? Was it awkward? Was it was it natural? How did how was that? It was online, and it was okay. a bit awkward because <laughs> the first time that we met, it was with together with our parents and our matching advisors. So it was six adults and us, <laughs> and um, we were there just for our parents to see who you know each other were, and mm -hmm. also to translate because there's also the language barrier and basically they were introducing themselves our families and getting to know just a little basic things together mm. the whole you know package of people <laughs> um so we didn't really get to talk that much that first conversation uh, but then after that we we did you know call each other like without our parents <laughs> present and um it was more comfortable for sure and the awkwardness of having your parents there wasn't there anymore <laughs> and um and it was pretty normal i think it flew very the, the flow of the conversation was very natural at the beginning uh it felt comfortable um yeah for me at least <laughs> i maybe it's just also, my concept as a guy but it i i feel like guys would be under more scrutiny from the f families of the female than vice versa. I don't know. Maybe that's not true, but d who do you think was more nervous about screwing this up when you guys were leading into this conversation? <laughs> mm. I don't know. That's a good question. I was nervous, for sure. <laughs> were you super nervous, David? I was also... I was I was more curious than nervous because because of uh, the intensity of the recommendation, and I was very curious. 
And um, yeah, no, because yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say yes. Let's just yeah, straightforward answer. Yes, I was I was also nervous and、uh, very curious. I well, can we just say the name of your matching advisors? I don't know why we're being so mysterious.、Oh, yes. I, I, I'm sure they won't mind.、Oh. The Lowens, <laughs> John and Sandra. <laughs>、yeah. The Lowens. John and Sandra. Yes.、Yeah. And I feel the Sorry, need to mention, to mention that. I remember mentioning. When you're talking about the intensity of the suggestion, I laughed because <laughs> John is a very intense dude, and I can imagine how intense that, because he's very protective. I'm sure of Araceli as well, so I could see him being like, you know,、yeah. do not screw this up, kind of vibe. So,、um, yeah, I like that. I like that. So then you were about to say something,、uh, David, about the the situation, about the scenario. Um. I forget, but I'll, 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 I think I'll, I'll remember later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so <laughs> I just wanted to mention that、uh, you know I was just rewatching this old movie. It's called Good Morning Vietnam, and the guy asks a girl out. He, he's living in Vietnam. I had to watch it because I'm living in Vietnam, and it's just that's how I learn history is by watching fictitious movies about country. <laughs> just kidding. But、um, he asks a girl out, and then when he goes to meet her, her entire village comes and walks with them the entire time. And to me,、okay. it's the most beautiful, pure thing. It was kind of supposed to be funny, but in essence, like that's the difference. Like that's the high noon way is that you're doing all this stuff out in the open together. You don't create、mm-hmm. any privacy or any secrecy.、Uh, let's use the word privacy until after the blessing. You know, that's that's when you become really just like. The third realm of heart, husband and wife, is the only kind of exclusive private relationship that you're meant to have. Everything else is really supposed to be open.、Um, and I, I just really like the fact that you guys had your first call all together with parents. It sounds so, in a sense, I could see people、uh, making fun of it and and mocking it because it's kind of like, oh, like what are you babies, right?、Um, but in That's just the broken version of like the fact that we're meant to do this alone is asinine. It's it's bananas、mm-hmm. that we're, we're like that a, a young person could have the capacity to handle love by themselves. It's you're、mm-hmm. taking the weight of the world on your shoulders. It's stupid. So I really respect、mm-hmm. you guys for doing that because it is、uh, as young adults you want to take the mantle of responsibility and say I can do this on my own. There's like this. Desire to want to prove yourself, but at the same time, is you want to do this right. So why not do it together with people who are doing it right? You know, your parents. So、uh, kudos、mm-hmm. to you for doing that. It's a great way <laughs> of unpacking.、Um, and then that's what. I, then oh yeah yeah go 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 go. No, that's what I wanted. I remember what I wanted to add was、uh, when our first call as a family. It was very important for me、um, to. Kind of satisfy this this sense of two families joining together, and、uh, I wanted to to see also her, but also her parents, to to have like a broader view, a full picture.、Um, you know, yeah, just that was just something like that I wanted in a in the communication process, more like the、yeah. official like you know、um, structured、um, meeting. Like I wouldn't want、mm-hmm. to. Go on one on one first, and that's how you first meet, or something like that. It was kind of like there was there was that aspect to it too, and I really appreciated that. Yeah, this is all noteworthy, and that's that's really why I wanted to do this podcast with you guys because you're a real high noon couple, and that seems to be the way. High noon, a lot of people think is just about sex or pornography or these kind of things, but it's a way of life, right? It's living, really living out in the open sunlight. The sunlight of God, of trust, of you know these virtues, and that is the best way to create a foundation of of like a relationship and just to be on your own. Imagine the difference, like when you're on your own, you're just left to your own devices, and there's you know like a lot of defensiveness, trying to prove yourself, and it's like this weird game. That's what dating is: is is like showing your best. Best face rather than your most honest, sincere face, and、yeah. you're a different person when you're in front of your parents. You are. You just are. You can't help it because no matter how big, like David, I I know you to be a hulking person. You're a big human, right? <laughs> in terms of your mass, 
uh, and but you're always going to be your parents' little boy, no matter how big you get, right? And that that's humbling and it's important, right? Because also, um, Araceli is not just Araceli; she's the daughter of two people who raised her, and to respect that is something that's completely lacking in our culture. So, um, so then, how did you like you started meeting and you started talking? And I wanted to kind of get into the uh, high noon aspect, like how um, there are cultures still to this day who say don't talk about your mistakes with each other, just. You know, I don't know. Talk about the weather yeah. or something. <laughs> I don't know what you're <laughs> supposed to talk about. Um, yeah. But you know, definitely in America, and this is catching on in other places like Philippines. They're learning to adopt this. Europe, they're doing it as well, which is like talk, getting real and being like, putting all your cards on the table and being like, here's my good stuff, here's my bad stuff. So, at what point mm-hmm. in the process did you start getting real with each other? Hmm. Let's say after first couple of weeks after yeah after maybe the second week we started asking okay. questions from the matching book. Was that yeah we yeah kind of we kind we of went started, through the matching book. Yeah, okay. we started very early on. I would say the the kick started. Let's say with the the matching handbook and questions that are okay. uh, very very wide, very open and very revealing as well. Right. Yeah. And from then we, I think they were more like broad. And then from then on, we started going like more specific in details about um, our lives, about uh, you know who we were and mistakes and, and virtues and everything. Um, vision and, and all of that. We started sharing about who we were. Um, yeah. And, we kind of had that conversation about past mistakes a lot of times, not not just once and then never again, right? It was uh, yes. a lot of times because as we are, you know, getting to know each other, you maybe say something that in, you know, uh, is maybe refers to it, but not all the way explicitly, right? And so we talked about many things at a, maybe at a surface level from the first the first time and then the second time we went deeper you know deeper in terms of details and, and honesty and, and vulnerability with each other um mm-hmm. as we kept on uh, talking and, and getting to know each other yeah <laughs> yeah and then I how did it come up like talking me. about okay yeah sorry there's a bit of a oh lie. sorry there's like a yeah, a little delay. Um, f- I guess for me, it was um, because it was my first communication process. I, a lot of things were coming up for, for as far as being more um, intentional. And um, I was I was taking it lightly in the, in the beginning, like, oh, I need to have a conversation. Let's 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 talk like you never know what you what you don't know. And um, so then that's kind of how I got into it. And then I started to uncover so many different insecurities that I have, things that I thought I was uh, in control of, but it was actually just, I'm just, I was living in a reaction mode to things mm. and um, started to uncover a lot of insecurities in me and preconceptions, um, um, expectations. And, and um, so then she was the one that kind of showed a lot of grace and patience by even by not being a patient like person, she would, she would say she's very not she's not patient at all. But in this aspect, when it's when it counts, she is extremely patient and uh, and um, yeah, I received a lot of um, grace and, and and love early on in the and also later on in the in the in the whole journey of the communication process up to the matching and also at, after. She still yeah. So I wanted to highlight that. One of the aspects and then um yeah, yeah i think that what you were saying andrew about showing your cards right i i believe in that <laughs> I, that we should know what we are getting ourselves into when yeah. you know the question comes up about you know are you going to commit yourself to share your life with this person right and that question it's like 
it's at the beginning of even you know even though it's the first call that's the thing that you're talking thinking about all of the time right is this a person i'm gonna you know get blessed to is this is it is it not is this correct or not it's like all the time that's the, the main thing that you're thinking about am i going to get blessed with this person and to know that to, to really answer that question you need to really know who this person is and not you know be delusional about your idea right and we were talking about the dating world today it's you show the best version of yourself and then that facade doesn't you know, it's not sustainable for a long time just to only be the best version or the good face of yourself without making any mistakes right so um i've been in with with high note for a long time so i wasn't i didn't have any fears about talking about this <laughs> and about bringing the topic up about you know sexual unwanted sexual habits about traumas fears and insecurities as, as david was saying and so yeah once once the as the conversation was flowing i was interested in knowing these kinds of things because i wanted to know whether i could get um, blessed to this person whether i could see myself sharing my life with, with him Hmm. Adding to that, one of the extreme things that I was grateful for as a guy, I didn't know how to bring that up as far as like I have a pornography masturbation habit that I'm trying to get rid of. How do I bring that up in the matching process, communication process? When do you bring that up? And yeah. is that going to be like a, a deal breaker? And then you're like invest in this person and you're worried about being a deal breaker and you're ending the communication process there and then the, all that dynamic that and then that was where I was ex extremely grateful that you were like uh what about this what, let, let, let's talk about the uh, like sexual integrity or, or or something like that and then that kind of just took a whole weight off my shoulder to to begin talking about that and yeah. and that was something huge that I think coming from sister's perspective was just that's just like revolutionary to i mean i wouldn't know how i would bring it up and i would feel like a failure and you know so then so you lucked out i mean that's that's yeah really important for people to know is like uh that sometimes there's a desire to want to reveal yourself to the other person but you don't know how you don't want to hurt them you don't want to lose them and so for sisters out there to understand your own comfort level is really important. Um, this, this is kind of advice because it, not everybody has the foundation that Araceli had, right? You, you've been in our world for a while. You've been kind of dealing with your own stuff and working on your own stuff. So you have more of a foundation to hear about his stuff. Um, so yeah. it's good to know your limits, but it's, it's so important. Like talking about stuff is to me non-optional. I, it's a cultural mm -hmm. thing and it's not a heavenly cultural thing. It's if, if, if you were to sell a car and you know that this car has transmission issues and you sell it and now that car is a liability to the person who just bought it, that is lying by omission and that is a crime mm -hmm. and it can hurt that person. And there are people that sneak in certain aspects of themselves to the blessing. And that is cruel because they cannot make an informed decision without all the information. Mm -hmm. So they're, yeah. you're, you're making them ignorant by not telling them about yourself. But like you guys said, you guys talked about it very early on in the process. And that's not necessarily common. I think that's just kudos to you, Araceli, for your foundation that you built. And, he, and David was inheriting your foundation. Um, yeah. But... You know, it does need to come out that again, that's why we're refining this process of the matching and, and the blessing is that there there's many months to kind of get to it. But this is not the homework that you're like, yeah, I'll do it later. Like my whole high school career is like Friday night and as I have a bunch of homework and I'm like, I'll do it Saturday. Saturday is like, I'm not going to do homework on a Saturday. I'll do it Sunday. And then Sunday night is like, but I'm so tired from the weekend. And then I show up to school didn't do my homework, get in trouble. You don't want to do that with the blessing, okay? It's like, oh, I'll talk about it later. And then you don't know this is, this is uh, it's criminal to yourself, to your future, and to the other person that you're in the process with. It's criminal in my perspective. Yeah. I know that's really kind of harsh, but it's something that I think has to change. And the fact that you guys are doing it sure. and talking about it, I think is really, really helpful. So thank you for that. 
and but I wanted to ask David, was it kind of intimidating because it sounded like Araceli was coming in hot, like asking some tough questions early on. And you're like still kind of get, pivoting and getting getting your footing, and then she's coming in with all like da 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 da. And and how were you <laughs> taken aback by this? Like, were you able? Were you alarmed by the fact that she was so open so early? No, I was uh, the contrary. I was just like, like mind blown in a way, and just mm -hmm. just so like fascinated and and that even attracted me more to her. Like, I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is crazy. Like, like, yeah, tell me more. Like, like. Like my mind. I wish was everybody like, could oh see Araceli's face right now. I want everybody to see how <laughs> proud Araceli is by how much you're attracted to her. That's amazing. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was no. It was. It was, it was very into, intellectually like um, stimulating, like the conversations and and um, yeah, I, I, I forget, but. Um, that, that was one of the incredible things that you're able to do in the beginning of the process. Well, can I ask, because w this is an issue that a, l a lot of people run into in the, in the matching, the blessing with, with high noon, especially with pornography is that, okay, they identify, right? Araceli starts asking you questions about your history and you identify, Hey, I'm, I've got this issue. I'm watching porn, I'm masturbating. I'm, I'd like to not, right? So that's clear. But then it's not just, okay, well then that's the end of the conversation and you resolve all of your issues and then, you know, you, you hold hands and you skip forward towards the future. Um, there's still the whole process of you getting rid of your compulsion, your addiction, your habit, whatever. And then there's still the fact that, you know, she's, she, I'm sure kind of waiting to see, is he, is he going to pass the test? Cause this is a, one of the first big tests that a couple might go through is, um, the white, the woman having patience or not for the guy who's able, who's working on himself and is able to break free from his habit or not. Right. So how did that pan out? What was that process for you of, okay, you introduce the fact that you have this thing in your life that you don't want, and this becomes a reality in your relationship. And then how do you guys sort through that on, on route to the blessing? You want to say your perspective first? Okay. Um, yeah. First of all, having having been a facilitator and having worked in my own, you know, unwanted sexual habits before, I that that really allowed me to change my perspective on having these unsexual, you know, unwanted sexual habits uh, like porn or masturbation. Because before, I I it was very hard my judgment. I, I, on that um, and that whole thing, it was like, oh, that's a very big mistake, and you're a terrible person, right? <laughs> Before realizing with myself that I wasn't even that, right? That, that I was that terrible person myself, right? So then, once I was able to, once I went through that process of reco recuperation and, and and forgiving myself, I I was able to see that just like for what it is, which is a mistake, and it's something that can get, you know, we can get. Uh, rid of that we can overcome that and we can work in our sexual integrity so when he told me his own uh his own situation i was not okay with it because that was a deal breaker for me but i knew that there was a process that we could go through that he could go through <laughs> in order to um go to the blessing uh, by having worked through that already or working on it and for me what was very important was to know that he was working on it and that that was as big of a deal breaker for him as it was for me uh, and that he had that determination to change his life and improve it right and through our conversations throughout many situations that we went through i was able to see uh, that it wasn't just words yeah you know, it wasn't just oh yes i don't want this and and then I never do anything else about it or we never revisit the conversation. It was something that was there that we knew that we needed that we needed to revisit you know, from time to time. And that 
um, the fact that we share that vision on res in relation to uh, sexual integrity helps you know ease my mind in terms of okay we can we can talk about this and work through this and with this um, and yeah that was my perspective mm. from having this conversation with her um, what blew my mind was her intense clarity um, having pre having you know, the, the knowledge that she has and the and the and the, and the, uh, the information that she had um, from from my, my perspective I was living in a in a space a mental space of of, of just cloud of judgment and not non clarity at all um, oblivious to my actions or just so then once I had this in conversation with her and saw that she had this incredible clarity on this topic and explicitly saying that is a red flag and decide basically asked me for to decide do you want to continue or not are you going to drop this habit or not like i don't care if you don't but it just we, we just can't continue from here so it's very clear and that was just that was very uh that was incredible to to and brave of her i just and um to to just bring that out and um i think that was one of the amazing things from our process is, is and also something that impacted me a lot was just her sense of clarity and it gave me the possibility to believe that i could have that clarity as well and live an intentional life as a couple and she was or she was she was also she's she wants an intentional life as a couple as well so then she uh, she gave me that that light at the end of the tunnel saying that there is a way and um yeah that's that's <laughs> basically of, my perspective out of the, the clarity pulled pulled something out of you that you didn't know you had in you and this is honestly i think we talked about it in the original podcast that I forgot to record, but the idea that <laughs> one thing that I don't, uh, I don't know, don't like, but that seems incomplete about the matching process is that a lot of times um, people don't have to rise up and kind of earn each other in a sense. You just kind of receive each other in some, some, some matchings are like that. And you don't have to fight for each other. And I do believe that that's very important. And it doesn't necessarily need to be in the arena of sexual integrity, but that's the most common one that it plays out in is somebody has an addiction and then the other person says, well, if you want a queen, you gotta rise up to the status of a king kind of thing, right? And like in my own matching process, it wasn't about sexual integrity, it was about, we were the kind of guinea pigs for the new matching process. That's how old I am, okay? And uh, we were getting conflicting advice from all over the place. And at a certain point, I just had to say, look, this is my matching and I'm taking responsibility for it. And I had to stand up and like, really just be like, this is us. And, and everybody that was giving me this conflicting advice just heard me. They heard where I was coming from. It wasn't from like an egotistical perspective. It was like, okay, now I'm inheriting the responsibility for this process. And it, it made them all actually uh, a lot more satisfied but it, it's same with like each other and with your parents is like you're going from your parents still have you in their hands until at some point they have to let you go and say okay now you are your own couple but you have to rise to the occasion and so it sounds like Araceli your clarity um, was the invitation for David to step up but your grace also I think that we mentioned that last time too, is like, um, if it's really judgmental, like you better change yourself. Otherwise, yeah, you know, it just makes the guys so uh, fearful and causes a lot of emotional reactions, which can create this negative cascade, you know, of them going back to porn. Mm -hmm. It makes it even worse, but you were clear, but filled with grace, but clear, but filled with grace. Mm -hmm. And that combination <laughs> allowed David to feel like he was being welcomed to rise up rather than being forced or I don't know pressured into changing instead it was rising up to the challenge very different energies you know what I mean it's not out of guilt or something weird and negative it's like 
he wants you, and but he's gonna have to deserve you in a sense, right? So that's really, really cool. Um, so then, what what were the some like like the good and the bad aspects about going through a process where honesty is so prevalent? Because I'm sure your ego must have taken some lumps, right? Because it's not just all pleasantries like. Uh, some people experience but you guys were honest with each other so I don't want to paint this rosy picture that if you're just honest then it just feels nice because sometimes I'm sure you felt quite awkward or maybe even a little bit painful so what was that like going through that process? yeah <laughs> yeah I, as you're saying it's definitely awkward I mean it can be awkward um, especially Especially when you have expectations of the matching process being this, you know, um, lovey kind of like romantic thing where you find your soulmate, right? And and then while you're going through it and you're being honest about everything, it feels unnatural. <laughs> it feels like oh, there's always something to talk about. <laughs> there's always and 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 you're maybe you might be like oh when does the the romantic aspect comes <laughs> right uh that was that was uh something that i actually uh, asked my uh, imaginary advisor sandra and and yeah we, we come with a lot of expectations and so then being honest about everything and going through this process this you know the way that we were doing it so open and, and so uh, vulnerable it was awkward felt very um, kind of like robotic in a way, like trying to check, like, oh, have we talked about this, or have you told me this? Are we considering that? It it it, it was more of an intellectual thing, um, but it was it was important to have that very clear and in, in place because we were really both we were both very intentional about wanting to have the the to find the person that shared the vision, right? And so. We knew that if we really focus on only, you know, I don't know, flirting with each other and stuff like that, then the important conversations um, are lost in a way. You you forget about them because you are lost in the in the feeling and the, the romantic aspect of it. So it was awkward in that sense, and and then it was also painful sometimes, not all of the time for sure, but there, it was definitely such uh, some occasions that. Um, asking so you know direct and, and maybe confrontational questions that you, know, you are expecting honest answers to then you're gonna get those answers and sometimes you're not gonna like them right and sometimes it, you <laughs> might even feel hurt but uh yeah but then um you know thinking that this is not something that we're doing against each other or you know it's not a game that i'm winning or or he's winning but we are trying to figure out who we are and if we are compatible for each other's visions and, and sharing our lives together so having that in mind was helpful because sometimes it was hurtful uh, but then it was also amazing to see you know gradually understanding who this person is and knowing that okay i see that this person actually believes in very similar things uh, in, and and shares a very similar vision to mine and we can definitely be a team together and, and be a couple so in that sense it was amazing because I wasn't worried about finding something out after the blessing because I knew what I was getting myself into in my perspective um, I did I, I am somewhat proud of my um, in, like conscious as a good side of the conscience that I knew it was it was um, I didn't want to fall in love let's say in having that love fog my judgment um, just by knowing myself and um, the process started in a very uh, spiritual intellectual level where where in hindsight I was looking like that that's a, the perfect combination to to start a very intentional let's say um, job interview or something like <laughs> uh, put it into simple terms like that we need to know everything um, red flags it's very robotic like she said it was very like dry it sometimes and was like are we ever going to fall in love 
and are, are we ever going to have a real, uh, romantic aspect? That was a that was a serious question at the time. Like, like yeah. oh, I maybe this process isn't meant to be. I'm not feeling the the spark of attraction or love or or that physical like libido type of uh, attraction or something. So I'm like, oh, is something wrong? Because that's what I've always I'm always hearing that with uh, these you know movies and and stories and. So, so then there was a lot of self doubt and uh, and in the during the process as well. So I really liked how um, looking back, we actually did it a pretty smart way, starting from like an intellectual and spiritual level, seeing if those are compatible first, and then we added a, a different levels to our uh, process, and then um, the attraction comes at the end, basically where. We know we can be vulnerable and honest with each other like, to the fullness, fully, you know, uh, intimate and everything. Can you please unpack that? So I think this is so essential. Is that there's even young couples now? I'm getting, you know, reports of second gen couples who are breaking the blessing because they feel like we're falling out of love. This whole idea is so entrenched. In our perspective of good and bad, right or wrong, um, and and it's largely based on feelings, right? But what you're talking about is you strategically avoided feelings in the early stages of your relationship. So, and then you were also worried about it, which I think is a genuine concern. Is like, am I going to be able to ever experience exciting, lovey-dovey feelings with this person? So, how do you? How do you do that? How do you like have the discipline to not just be stuck in feelings, but how then do you also transition to feelings? Like at what point do you guys feel lovey-dovey feelings yet? At what point did those come if they came at all? Or are you working on it still? Please unpack that. <laughs> well, to answer the last question, yes, we, we have, <laughs> um, I would say, after the commitment ceremony, I think that's where it started. It's like a little bit before. Before, a little bit before. <laughs> yeah. A little bit before. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. That was before I, 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 I traveled. Yeah. That, that's where it started. And we're like, oh, it is possible. And and then we're like, I felt like, like well, what so happened? relieved. Tell me. And then, uh, we uh, got into a very um, bad argument. <laughs> and. Um, and and then as uh, we were explaining each other or the motives, I, w I wanted to explain that my motives weren't ill intent, but but she just wanted to know if I could uh, um, if I forget. But um, but after that, after we resolved the conflict in a way and I could see that she cared for me and and that I cared for her. And uh, she had written a lot of her thoughts and feelings into uh, into poems and writings, and she she does that. Um, she 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 has the, the habit of, of doing that, and I found that very beautiful because she was able to tell me those things in person for various different reasons. But once she sent me how she felt, it just like. Uh, on on a, on a poem or, or, or written text, it just tore down all my walls and like like I feel like this this love that's like more than friendship love. It's like a super intentional. Let's be a couple. Let's 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 go through life together type of love, and uh, and that kind of like kind of like the ignition, the the first spark of of um, this idea of being a couple, being a team forever. So I think that's that's where it started and... <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. From my perspective, but it's going back a little before, before that experience, um, I had seen a lot of matching processes from other friends of mine you know, and other sisters and brothers and I had seen <laughs> that experience where they were, you know, they were, they had fallen in love during their matching process and they were all lovey-dovey and they buy 
the next year after the blessing, they were having problems and some of them didn't make it. And so I had seen that and I thought, okay, with a long distance type of matching process, the physical attraction aspect won't even be a thing because you know, there's no way <laughs> it can happen really. Um, so that was one thing that was helpful in that sense because we were not focused on that. But, uh, but we both had that same worry about, you know, is, are the feelings going to come? And in my experience, I, I read a lot. <laughs> I read a lot of romantic novels I read. Um, and I knew in a way that I had the experience of, let's say, falling in love with the characters that I was reading about, right? That to care about them, even though they were, you know, non-existent uh, in, in, in my imagination. So I, I had that um, certain, yeah, certainty that I could love anyone, right? Once I got to knew them, um, and once I got to knew, uh, got to knew, know David uh, more deeply uh, on a more deeper level and more vulnerable level. Um, that was uh, that those feelings started to show up but uh adding to the experience that um david was sharing i i wanted to be able to love david right not only in the romantic aspect but to really be able to show my love and 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 give myself to david right and this was before right before we started right before we decided that we were going to um commit to each other right and, and and receive the blessing and we had this experience where we we had this argument um and and i was feeling hurt and i was feeling uh i was having some fears and and i was feeling that i there was some part of david that i couldn't see that he wasn't showing and i was insisting that he he talked about it but he couldn't uh, for some reason, so then I realized that I wasn't doing that either, that I wasn't showing this aspect of vulnerability that I was feeling hurt because couldn't really love him all the way because there was some type of lock, blockage there. So I, I, I could sense that wall, right? And so I wrote to him, uh, actually I was writing for myself, but then I shared that with him about how I was feeling. There were some pain there was some feeling of, of, of uncertainty and 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 yeah just yeah you you don't know for sure until you know right so then I shared all these feelings all of these thoughts and you know really exposing myself um to him and I wasn't really expecting anything with it but I just thought that you know if I'm expecting for him to show me who he is I need to do that myself first as well and so I I did that and then that's when he saw who I was like completely, not only on the spiritual and intellectual level, but also on the emotional level as well, uh, and, and of my heart, right? And so I think that's like the first step that, that opened the, the door to emotions uh, for us. And right, not long after that, weeks after that, we decided that we would wanna uh, commit and, and you know get receive the blessing. Uh, but that was that was just the first step. It it wasn't that we fell in love right then and there, right? It, it, it took a time. It was gradual, right? And and we all eat, and we had more experiences like that where we may have have some conflicts that we needed to solve together, and that's what opened the door for more deeper, you know, emotional connection. Yeah. Well, David used the word so that was spark. The start. That was a good word. Yeah. Spark. <laughs> One quick side note, adding to what she said was, um, she brought up the idea and I agreed to decide on one day to decide that if we're gonna commit to this or not, which would have never come from me. So I was really grateful that she, she insisted on that. And then we, we was like, okay, what's a reasonable date that we would know that if we wanna continue this process or not, so then we can just stop this process and then get in a community patient process with somebody else and um, that was just and that was that was um, um, incredible that she was she, she brought that up because yeah I realized that I'm more of a reactive person uh, or have reactional habits so I would 
that was not going to come from me. And also bringing up the being open to future or deeper feelings. I didn't have the, the skills for that as far as you are working on yourself a lot more to have the ability and that skill at, in that point in your life to be able to to open that, that door. And then I'm like a scared little kid, like, oh, like, oh, OK, oh, really, is, this is possible. And then, and then I was able to see. And then um, so, yeah, the, people are, are in different levels. And and for me at the time, I was I was uh, I was very scared and very reactive. So then um, just, just in hindsight, just want to add that. And by setting that date and then we deciding, she said either yes or no, maybe equals no. Like I was just saying, maybe this, maybe that, maybe, maybe, maybe. And then it's like, okay, if you say maybe, it's no. And then let's, let's say bye and, and let's like just be clear. So that was monumental. That's fantastic. Yeah, maybe means later and later means I don't have the capacity to make decisions. So it means no. That's great. <laughs> Wow, Araceli. Uh, very clear. <laughs> A lot of clarity coming from you. So we are kind of at the end of this, but I wanted to know what was, if you can think of a single piece of advice, the single best bit of advice that you remember getting um, and the single worst bit of advice that you remember getting about the matching process. Um, stuff that uh, had you followed it, it would have been destructive or it was destructive because you followed it. Because um, there's a lot of advice out there, right? And like I said, this is a work in progress, so it doesn't necessarily have to be universally bad. So you don't have to worry about offending anybody. It could just be didn't apply to you. But um, yeah, give me the scoop. The good and the bad. I can start uh, with uh, one thing that just stuck to me that um, John Lowen said was uh, was feelings just want to be understood. They don't they don't need to they don't answer to anybody. Like nobody has the right to say your feelings are, are good or bad. Like you don't have to act on your feelings, but they just it's just important for them for myself that they're understood. So then they can be talked through instead of just like, oh, that's bad, like die or something like that. Mm -hmm. So to the extreme, to that point, um, like spiritual or intellectual. So then that was, that was incredible for me to, because of, I had all these different feelings with my past like um, habits and um, that were going into the matching process, like expectations, not, 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 um, happening or fantasies they're not happening oh i thought my process was going to be this other way that i envisioned in my fantasies and it's not happening like that and why do i have those feelings like who do i talk to about those feelings how do i how do i navigate through that digest all of that and and um i needed to hear that those feelings were not wrong they're not good or bad they're just feelings and they just needed to be understood and I need to understand that they have been understood. Kind of like a paradox, but but um, that was, I think, the best advice that I that I, that freed me. That freed me. Then, yeah, not to be a slave to feelings is a fantastic. Like a lot of people try to deny their feelings because they like they're wrong, or they just follow their feelings because they must be right. Instead, just understanding them is a much happier. Where are they coming from? Where did this feeling just come from? Is it a concept? Exactly. Is it a reaction? Yeah, that's sound advice. Uh, any bad advice? <laughs> oh, bad advice is... Um, um, Doesn't have to be from Uncle John. Don't worry. No, <laughs> no this, this, is, this is what I heard from my my uh, peers and co-workers, um, other people like, like, oh, it's a, it's a candy shop for guys now in our movement in the matching process. There's a, there's whatever type of, of girl you want or uh, attractive, unattractive, whatever you want is out there because there's a lot more girls than guys mm. and pick and choose. You have your choice, yeah. something like that. I'm like, that's 
that's messed up. <laughs> Thank mm. you. Yeah, that's very clear. Araceli san. Yeah, uh, I'm, I remember someone told me, and I don't know if this is necessarily bad or good, um, but it's a very interesting take that someone told me um, that the matching process and the blessing, it's not restoration. Because we are, as you were saying, this is a process that is new, right? And this is not something that should feel like you should suffer in order to go through it, in order to, you know, be good or something like that. This person told me it shouldn't be restoration because this is an original part of, of our, the process of humans, you know, the life of human beings in, in, in a way. Um, for me, that was very interesting because I did have that perception, perception that um, the more, you know, struggle, the more you restore, you know, the better, right? And and it doesn't have to be that way. It, it doesn't mean that everything is light and it's easy, right? You, you definitely have to work for it. You definitely have to fight for it, as we we're saying. But understanding that this is the first time that this is happening in this history of the world, of humanity, of, of God even, because uh, God didn't get to do this with Adam and Eve, right? He's getting to do it with us, right? So it is very new. And just having that awareness that this is a very n new process um, it's important because just it just puts you in a position where you understand that not everything that happens it's coming from a ill intent kind of motive right it's not ill intentioned but it's just out of ignorance or, or fears or you know, just not knowing, right? In a sense, and mm -hmm. and just trying to to really do everything by the book, and and trying to uh, get to the blessing, right? People in, in in with that pressure in mind, maybe make some mistakes, or or give you bad advice, or or advice that doesn't apply to you. So just having that in mind helped me uh, just perceiving the process in a different way. Um, where I can understand that it might take effort, it might take work, but but it's also a, a beautiful experience that we're getting to 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 you know go through um, for the first time. Our parents, our communities, and, and God together with us, and so we can't expect our parents or our elder you know mentors to know everything because it's mm. new. And so yeah, yeah, that's that's one advice. It's a great point. And it's, it's one that needs to be understood is that I think also I hear the, the both kind of extremes. One is like everything's restoration. So suffering is important. Mm -hmm. um, and other people is like, no, it's channel yeah. cook. So everything should be nice and fluffy and fun. And I think both are really <laughs> kind of destructive uh, because anyway, the, a much better way to look at it and the way that Hainun does it with the North Star goal is when you are clear about what you want, issues will arise and your limitations will arise and you'll have to restore whatever limitations you have in order to overcome and experience the victory. So there will be restoration regardless yeah. because we're still fixing ourselves and fixing this world, right? So it's unavoidable, but it's not the focus. The focus is on building something that works, right? And that has to be the priority, yeah. not restoration because some people think that suffering is the point and so mission accomplished they just yeah. create a life of suffering good job <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hear you so any any particularly bad advice that had you followed it uh, would have been a disaster or made your life more difficult than it needed to be because you followed it well i think i think that was the bad advice, actually, <laughs> in my case. Because uh, had I taken it, you know, it, to the extreme, it shouldn't be restoration, right? It would have been like, uh, I would have judged, or, or my criteria for my matching process would have been, oh, this doesn't feel good, so yeah. it's not right. You know? So um, so that was the, the let's say, bad advice. <laughs> um, I think as for good advice, something that 
I guess it was very prevalent in my matching process with, with David was um, being empathetic um, and and with that having the courage to confront <laughs> certain things because what happens is that in this era of you know communication you know we think that you know if this person haven't uh, hasn't answered in the next you know, 20 minutes, then he doesn't care about you, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, he's ignoring you and you should yeah. be better, you are better off with that, without this person, right? Um, and and so being empathetic to, you know, really putting yourself in the position of this other person thinking, you know, he might be busy. <laughs> it's not against you, right? He might be busy. There's, there's so many other things that could be happening. So just mm -hmm. having the courage to say, okay, what is happening actually? The curiosity, like, to, un to try to understand what is going on is is there something actually going on or is this just my mind and my anxiety right uh making scenarios in my mind so just having that uh, empathy towards the other person um and and really seeing this person as my brother that was the main thing for me trying to mm -hmm. um view david as my brother and and understanding that the mm -hmm. way that i was feeling so anxious and and worried he probably was feeling as well right so just having that consideration towards him as well and 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 yeah you know help both of us find our happiness you know either through each other in a couple as a couple or you know just brother and si and, and sister if the matching process hadn't worked with us right so the empathy and and the perspective of of this is my brother that i'm talking to for context, um, when I was having some episodes of mis uh, not communication, it would be like two weeks, two days to a week that I couldn't get, that I wouldn't text her back because I was, I was going through self doubt and all these, these uh, things in the, in the matching process. So then, so just put in, into context that extreme. Yeah, that's, that's really quite helpful. You're learning about how to communicate and how often and all that that's it's really sound yeah thank you guys i think this is really helpful and to be honest completely transparent i think yeah, for sure the value of this recording superseded the recording recording that never was i think we got we dug in deeper <laughs> and we got we got further so i appreciate your patience yes. and your grace um and thank you all can can people reach out to you if they have any questions because we have a lot we have a lot of people in our world that are honestly terrified of, of the matching process because they feel ill-equipped or their feelings have a hold on them. Like you were saying, David, they haven't, they haven't understood their feelings. They just have this strong feeling of inadequacy. It's actually that whole candy shop thing, David, is uh, the reason why, in my perspective, that there's usually double the amount of sisters and brothers at most blessing like in terms of eligibility is because of the self-doubt in the guys mm. they doubt their ability to rise up like you were asked to so um can people reach out if they have any questions yeah absolutely of course. Well, right. send your emails or numbers yeah we can put them in the show notes i just i want everybody to hear that you are welcome to their questions because it's an invitation to connect yes. and there are a lot of questions yes. out there for sure yeah, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm gonna send this to actually I was in I was in an airport yesterday and I ended up having a deep conversation with John Lowen in like in a public oh, yeah. square. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, please send me more stuff. So he's gonna listen to this. The Lowens will hear this. So do you wanna say hi to them? And yeah. do you have any words for the people that helped you so much find each other? Just wanna say I'm super grateful and yeah. Hi, John and Sandra. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, no, I just wanted to say, yeah, I'm extremely grateful and, and, and uh, I'm just, yeah. Looking back, I don't know how everything happened. It was just, it's just, ah. Uh, God. Yeah, I, I, not, not, I can't really explain. Maybe you can. <laughs> you can <laughs> I, yeah, first, we are very grateful. Yeah, I really appreciate their, their willingness to support us and to be part of our process and to really uh, mediate sometimes they needed exactly. to really talk 
uh, in our behalf and that was really amazing and really appreciate that and and then just that we love you yes well thank you guys we so you. much thank you <laughs> uh thank you yeah thank everybody you. you have an invitation <laughs> yeah. to reach out and we will end this because i don't know how because i'm canadian or i was born in canada we don't know how to end conversation so i'm just gonna press <laughs> three two one <laughs>